Hello, it's Scott Manley here and it's 2020 and I haven't been on the air, so to speak, for the last few days because my wife took me on a an emergency ski vacation because she said I'd been working too hard. So I had to go skiing and was definitely unable to work because I was too damn tired. Yeah. So yeah, I'm finally back. Thanks for everyone that posted well wishers. I look forward to continuing to enrich your lives with all sorts of fascinating stories about space and video games. And today I have something called God's Longitude, which is a story related to me by a guy called Duncan Steele, who uh, we worked with, we worked with him at a Arma Observatory. He was very much into, you know, killer asteroids and things like this. And I did some art for one of his books. Um, he had a story about calendar reform. Yes, I know. The th great thing, but uh, you know how and how calendar reform might have been weaponized to, in religious conflicts. So how do we get there? Well, yeah, remember how I did the the best things of the decade, and many people were nitpicking and saying, actually, you know, it's not really technically a decade yet because there was no year zero and all that. Very true, but I'm going to out geek you all now with this story. So. The calendar that we use through most of the world is the Gregorian calendar, and that is a Christian calendar. It's a calendar designed so that uh, the church can figure out when all the important religious holidays happen. So how do you define, first of all, a year? Well, a year, many people think, is the time that it takes the Earth to move around the sun. This is not actually how the year is calculated. The year that is used in the Gregorian calendar is the time that it takes for the Earth or for the Sun to move from one vernal equinox, one spring equinox to another. So the moment that the year is measured from is the time that it between the Sun moving from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. And that is not the same as the amount of time it takes for the Earth to go around the Sun because the Earth wobbles, the Earth's axis wobbles, and as the Earth's axis wobbles, its equator moves around the Sun slightly. So the year defined by this is about 365.2424 days, whereas the sidereal year, the time it takes the Earth to move around the Sun, is 365.2564 Days. That's about 20 minutes and 24 seconds longer than the year that we use in our calendar. So it turns out actually the Earth's orbit is even more complicated than that because the Earth is, Earth's orbit is slightly eccentric. As it passes through perihelion, it's moving slightly faster. In fact, yesterday we had the Earth move through its closest perihelion of this entire century. At aphelion, it's moving slower. And the perihelia and aphelia are totally unrelated to the position of where the equinox happens. So this means that if you measure the year from the spring equinox, then the same measurements measured for the autumnal equinox are slightly different. And if you measure the solstices as your year end, year start, again, you get slightly different values. So the, this autumn, or the spring equinox is chosen for our calendar because it's critical to figuring out when Easter is. And Easter is pretty much the most important holiday or you know religious festival in the Christian calendar. The date of Easter is defined as the first Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. And prior to the sort of formal establishment of this, it was measured relative to the Hebrew calendar. But in 325 AD, uh, Emperor Constantine brought together a bunch of bishops at the, for the Council of Nicaea, where they hammered out all the important parts of the church. And they said that they were going to use the Julian calendar, which had been, of course, established by Julius Caesar back in about 46 BC. Of course, back then, he didn't think of it as 46 BC. It was like the 700th or something year since Rome had been established. And this has the familiar four-year leap year cycle. So that has every four years you would have a leap year. And that meant the, the year length was 365.25 days. And that, you'll notice, is slightly longer than 365.2424. So this Julian calendar was wrong by about three days every four centuries. It had three too many leap years. And by the 16th century, they were lagging behind the real world by about 10 days. 
So Pope Gregory got together some advisors, hammered out a solution, and that was published in as a papal order, a papal bull, in 1582. They would cut 10 days from the calendar to bring them back into alignment, and they would change the leap year cycle. They would lose three leap years. So what you would have is every four years you would have a leap year unless it was a century year, unless that century year was divisible by 400. So 1600 would be, would be a leap year, but 1700, 1800, 1900 would not be a leap year. 2000 would again be a leap year. So this order went out and of course all the faithful were supposed to follow it, except that not all the Christians were Catholics anymore. In particular, England had become a Protestant nation back when Henry VIII had decided that he really needed a divorce from his first wife. And by 1582, it was Queen Elizabeth I that was on the throne. And as a Protestant nation, they were in no hurry to do what the Pope said, no matter how good this new calendar was. So Elizabeth consulted her experts, and one of her experts was someone called John Dee. John Dee was a smart dude. Uh, he was a mathematician, a mystic, an alchemist. He was an astrologer back when I wouldn't diss astrologers. He also, interestingly enough, was sort of an agent. He would you know, go around Europe and do important jobs for the Queen and he would sign all his letters, 007. Yeah. So uh, he published his report for Queen Elizabeth and it was, you know, written in verse and prose. The title of it is a plain discourse and humble advice for our gracious Queen Elizabeth, her most excellent majesty to peruse and consider as concerning the needful reformation of the vulgar calendar for the civil years and days accounting or verifying according to the time truly spent. And you can understand why most historians abbreviate this to a plain discourse. So this had a few suggestions. So it confirmed more or less that the the idea of the, the new leap year cycle was reasonable, but suggested taking 11 days instead of 10, and also suggested dropping the extra days in little blocks at the end of months to sort of spread out the hurt. But many uh, people looking and reading between the lines have suggested that there may have been a better calendar that John Dee was actually promoting and doing so in secret, creating a plan for a more perfect calendar, a calendar that could be weaponized to weaken the Catholic Church. So the church calendar specifies that the equinox is on March 21st, but the truth is the astronomical equinox can actually happen on the 19th, 20th or the 21st because the calendar lets it wander by about 53 hours. So that you have these four year cycles, but then you have this big eight year cycle. So if you, your deviation, your wander of the actual time of the equinox is quite large in that case. John Dee's suggestion was likely the 33 year Persian calendar that has eight leap years in a 33 year cycle. So you have seven four year cycle and then one five year cycle. And that meant you've got much smaller changes more often. And actually this keeps the equinox within 23 hours and 16 minutes. So the equinox could be confined to, you know, the 20th and the 21st, but you can do even better than that. Because if you think about it, if you pick your meridian just right, you get plus or minus 12 hours from that. And that's more than enough to accommodate the 23 hours and 16 minutes. So this meant that if you chose the correct calendar and the right place to measure time from, that you could keep the date of the equinox the same. The date that is so important to calculating Easter, which is the most important holiday in the Christian calendar. That made a very powerful proposition. But not only that, the 33 year cycle was very special because the 33 years is supposed to be the lifetime of Jesus Christ. So if you started the calendar from when you thought Jesus was born and ran it forward in a 33 year cycle, then you would have a calendar that you could claim was based on everything that was important to the Christian church. So some have theorized that there was a secret plan to set up a church or a city on this special location, which would match all these criteria. And then at the appropriate time, once control was established, they would reveal this new calendar to the world 
and many wavering Catholic states would flip over and walk away from the Pope as they realized the Pope was indeed fallible. Um, there was a big problem with this because in the 1680s, the, well, the longitude that they were looking for is roughly where uh, 77 degrees west compared to Greenwich. Obviously, they weren't using Greenwich back then, but yeah, 77 degrees west, which runs through the middle of the Caribbean, and that was very much controlled by the Spanish, who were, of course, very Catholic. So Britain would have to grab a portion of this longitude, this God's longitude, as some have christened it. And... If you look, it's pretty much, you know, Virginia, Carolina, and the West Coast. This is pretty much exactly where Walter Raleigh started founding colonies. One of the first ones that was founded was on Roanoke Island, and it was, well, it didn't go well. You probably have heard, may have heard of the Lost Colony, or the, the Roanoke Lost Colony, where, um, you know, they sent a bunch of people over and they surveyed the land, they drew really good maps, they made lots of measurements because, guess what, they were trying to figure out what the longitude was. They even talked about going 50 miles inland to resettle because, turns out, they were needed to go a little further west to actually get to their current location. And then they, uh, yeah, all disappeared and nobody, and they left one inscription on a tree and didn't know what happened. Uh, part of this may have been because they were getting supplied from, you know, Britain or England, sorry. And the Spanish Armada kind of interrupted the whole supply lines and uh, then they evaporated. England would get its first American colony in the form of Jamestown, but that would happen after Queen Elizabeth I died and James VI of Scotland ascended to the English throne as James I of England. And so that seems to be the point where the plan came to the end. England stayed on the Julian calendar until 1752, certainly long enough to say that it wasn't following the Pope at that time. But uh, ultimately, yeah, there was no response. So if the plan ever existed, it must have been abandoned for complicated reasons. Uh, although, I do point out that if you take a look at the line 77 West, uh, this line that John Dee may have you know, cited as being the best place to found a centre of power for a Christian world. It runs right through the middle of Washington, D.C. And if that doesn't get your conspiracy theory uh, antenna twitching, I'm not sure what will. Truth is, uh, it, it, all the evidence is very much circumstantial. There's no writing in John Dee's own words to this effect, but there's lots of hints in verse that he wrote and lots of other circumstantial evidence related to who was on certain trips. Thomas Harriet, for example, was an astronomer, a mathematician that was sent along with the first Roanoke colony to accurately measure everything. And he returned home with uh, one of the best maps of the, the New World at that time. It's also worth noting that we do know that Pope Gregory's advisors were very much aware of the 33-year calendar, but ultimately chose not to use it. So yeah, I hope you found some interest in this uh, story I picked up 20 years ago. It covers a lot of interesting ground, and you know, hey, I'm always a big fan of history of that era. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.